you're listening to Force Majeure, an actual play Star Wars podcast. My name is Adam and I'm your host, and today's episode will be brought to you after these words from our sponsors. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Okay, take it from here. Hey kids, do you want to be cool? Do you want to be the coolest kids on the block? Come to Frenchie Boingo's Tiki Bar and Lounge. Ladies night every Thursday and free speeder parking. They've even got Coruscant's premier all brass Max Rebo cover band, Sax Rebo, playing every Sunday. Frenchie Boingo's, 14 Dak Avenue. Coruscant 245. Oh, okay, is that alright? Okay, okay, cut, cut! Hello everybody and welcome back to Force Majeure. This is the Cold Fire Chronicles episode 13. And I am Adam, your host and the GM. Joining me to carry on weaving this tale, I have... Hi, I'm Ross. I'm playing Agatha, a morale and warrior aggressor whose emotional strength is his pride, but whose weakness is his anger. Hi, I'm Mim. I play Lassa. She's a human sentinel artisan. Her emotional strength is her curiosity, but her weakness is obsession. Hi, I'm Mikey. I'm currently playing 80% of Duran. He's a Chiss mystic advisor. His emotional strength is his enthusiasm, and his emotional weakness is his recklessness, quite obviously. I'm Ed Fortune, and I play the character of Oberon Brick. He is a human hunter seeker. His emotional strength is justice, and his emotional weakness is cruelty. And before we get started today, we have a question from our characters, and this episode's question is... Agatha? Yes? How old were you when you realised that things could die? Agatha has not given this much thought, but Agatha is starting to realise why you were in prison. <laughs> Bonza. That is the Perfect. best Agatha answer I've ever, ever heard. heard. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to high five that, dude. Yeah, no, I'm going to high five that. That was very good. Oh, uh, yeah, dear. all right, cool. Moving on. <laughs> we rejoin our heroes in the gutted cargo section of the Hawk 290 freighter, the Costa Thabaran. Jiren is slumped on the floor right arm torn from its socket, being tended to by Lassa. Oberon stands guard, rifle out, wary for what further threats might follow. Agatha slumps a little, trained badly from the fight so far and vain still coursing of the anaesthetic pumped into him by the twisted harvester droid that charged the group as they came out of the engine compartment. The lights remain low, gravity functional but twitchy, air very thin and growing thinner as the exertions of the last few moments have sapped yet more precious oxygen from the limited supply remaining aboard the Costa Thabaran. Agatha's environment suit hangs off him in absolute tatters. Jiren's surprisingly more intact than Jiren in fact is. Oberon grabs a piece of shattered droid uh, one that's conveniently long enough to basically stand as, as some sort of cane. Takes a piece off it so it looks a bit more like a stick. And backs up towards Jiren. Can you stand? I, n- I know the environmentals aren't working, but it's, it's cold in here, right? It, it, it is cold. It is cold. Can you stand? I'm not sure. He holds out his arm. I offer support. He gets to his feet. Jiren is holding really tightly onto where the stump was. It doesn't seem to be bleeding as badly as you'd expect. In fact, there doesn't seem to be a great deal of blood flow from there anyway, but he's not removed his arm. He very briefly let Lassa have a look at it, but as soon as Lassa stopped tending to him, he put his hand back over. It's difficult to tell for a a Chiss, because he's quite a vibrant blue, but he looks very pale. His eyes are redder than you remember. He's obviously going into shock. Lean on this, it'll help. I, I don't have any way to lean on it. I'm not letting go. Okay. We need to finish what we're doing and then leave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Is there anything further I can do to help Duran? You've already done a medicine roll, Mm -hmm. so for Duran, no. The best you can do is put another stim pack in him. 
but actually having having looked him over at the end of last episode given that his arm was torn from his socket the gross kind of tissue trauma that you'd expect isn't as severe it's not bleeding out aside from the arm loss and the blood loss he's in reasonably good shape somehow see it's not so bad really Duran. i mean look at it you, if anyone could carry off this look it's you right <laughs> I, I i know you're being kind but 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 that's my arm over there i know and look we'll leave no hand behind so lassa goes to get it and puts it in her bag she she wraps it up in a piece of cloth it's not the cleanest cloth but it's the cleanest she's got lassa can you can you put it back on is it is it gone I'm not sure. I certainly can't do it right now. Is that all right, my love? But we'll have to wait till we get back to the ship, somewhere a bit cleaner. He looks a little bit far away. He looks a bit off, and he's staring at the um, the medical droid. So, could we take a replacement? We can certainly try. That's a good idea, Jaren, but I need to work out how much oxygen we've got left in case this has messed it up again. I don't know whether any of the things being thrown around, and she casts a quick look at Agatha, have damaged anything further and then we've got to find whatever it is we need on here and get off as soon as possible this is a bad place for any sort of procedure like that i just need an arm just well, we've got it we've got it right here in the bag see she kind of waves it you can tell she's not she's not doing this for her she waves it because she thinks it's the kind of thing you'd do and i got your watch <laughs> there we <laughs> All right, now you're gonna you're gonna lean on Oberon, and he's gonna help you. Uh, my legs are fine. Oh, aye, but this just it's just in case because if if you were to trip over, you you can't put both hands out to catch yourself. I'm holding you solidly with one arm, and my rifle is nestled on the other. He stands up quite proudly for about a second, and then it's quite obvious he's lost a lot of blood, so he slumps a little bit towards you. Jaren, hello. The next thing we need to do. Is killed criffing thing that hurt you. Can I can I have a have a gun now, please? Yes, I give him a gun. And a, a pistol would be best. I don't really. My rifle days are over. Um, I, I hand you a blaster pistol. It's my nicer one. He lets his hand away from the stump, and you can see that it's almost healed over already. And he only lost it seconds before. At some point, I'll need to know how to use one of these. But um, it's point and click. Point. Pull the trigger. Okay. Take a deep breath as you pull. Okay. Can I ask, how messed up does Agatha look? Oh, yeah. Agatha is... I'm just going with swaying a lot at the minute, but yeah, he's still looking at the remains of what he's thrown and what it landed on. It's not a pleasant sight, but um, he's taken an awful lot of a beating in the process. That used a lot of his, his remaining strength, so he's going to be reaching for another stim pack soon. Is there a loss of blood or anything like that? Yeah, Agatha's starting to bleed again. There's a lot of wounds. They didn't really have a chance to seal the the first time, but if they had been, they'd be reopening because he's just exerted himself tremendously. Right then. All right, I'm going to leave you, Duren, with Oberon. If you could have a look at the ship, just see whether how our oxygen supplies are. There's normally a readout on that console over there. I'm going to go deal with Agatha, all right? And she walks up over there. Larsa, if you have engineer's tape, I have stim packs. Trade. I think you might need the engineer's tape as well. He says, pointing at Agatha, the various halls. It's all right. I've got Gaffatron. It's fine. I wave uh, JN go over to the dials. Okay. I'll stick with you for the moment, Oberon, just because it's nice and easy and doesn't require a roll. Time left, and before you all start suffocating, you've probably got maybe 45 minutes of normal exertion left before there is no more air left in the ship. However... In the next few minutes, it's going to start thinning down enough that those of you that aren't breathing from the supply you brought with you from Coalfire's Mercy are going to start struggling. Not a lot, not asphyxiation levels, just like being at the top of a mountain. It's going to be thin and that will impact upon your performances. We've got about 45 minutes, but if we get into a fight, we're going to end up in stitches. That's not good enough. We're definitely going to get cramps. I don't know. We're pulled in too many different directions at the moment. I could use that time to try and sort the ship out so we have more time, or I could use that time to get uh, someone to uh, a better situation for maybe making them feel better. I mean, we could all do with a little bit of, you know, a, a clean and scrub up, or we could use it to purely power on through, hope nothing else happens and get off. We are on the clock here. We are being observed. And as if on cue. Hmm. Are you coming? Oh, 
thoughts affect you. Either way, you will be harvested. All right, well, I think that makes our decision pretty quick. We've got to keep going. There's no point in staying here. Whatever we do while we stay in one place, it'll just send more things. The only solution I can think of is to press on and try and stop this at the source. I am happy to go. I think I speak for all of us when I say we really need to kill this thing. All right, I'm going to go try and patch up Agatha. I think he needs a bit of help. Duran, I know you've got your hands full with everything that's going on. Hand. I'm terribly sorry. I know you have your hand full. Yeah. Before we leave, can I, and he points at the medical droid, can I have that arm, please? After we've killed Flesh. All right. Do you think we're going to have time to get it? We might as well get it now. All right. Uh, all right. I've got to do Agatha first, otherwise... I'll do it. You'll do Agatha. All right. I'll give you back your stim back, so... No, no. You, you do Agatha. All right. You I'll do, do the, the arm. arm. All right. Try not to damage the main connector points, all right? Because they can be... They're really delicate. Just be careful, all right? So I just, like, I take away the bit that it connects to, if you see what I mean? Because I'm not an engineer. I'll come back to you on this one. Okay. Okay, so Lassa goes over to Agatha. All right, then, let's have a look at you. That is not looking good. All right, can I do a medical roll? You can. How many wounds are you left out of your total? Or how many wounds have you taken out of your total? Agatha's taken seven wounds. And your threshold is? 16. So you're less than half. Yeah. Taken. It's the strain that's more than the wounds. At the yeah, yeah. So you're below half your threshold, so it's a single purple test. Medicine, I have one yellow and two green. So that's one yellow, two green and one purple. Well, that wasn't particularly good. That's one failure, but two advantage. Well, those advantage will let you regain two strain. I'll take that. It's better than nothing. It is. Okay. As it's your second one of the day, that will heal you four wounds. Okay, thank you. And while you're doing that, Oberon goes over to the twisted corpse pile. There is the three animated Zomborgs that drop down and pounced on Jiren, and this harvester droid, which is twisted and kind of crumpled around them, because it was the impact of that hitting that took them out. So they're all kind of smashed into a bit of a heap. Because the Zomborgs, and I'm still using that title, you know, at me, because the Zomborgs were so old, their bones have shattered on the impact of this droid coming in, so it really is a bit of a twisted jumble of limbs here. The Harvester droid is in reasonable shape considering the impact. The main reason it's off is because as it hit them, the hydro spanner that Lassa had jammed into its connector in its neck severed its head and went deep into its body, and that's what shorted out kind of the inner workings of this harvester droid. But all of its limbs are intact, its head's hanging off, but there's still a very, very faint trickle of power going to its eyes. So Oberon doesn't really know droids, but he does know murder. He looks at the droid, figures out where its battery pack is, disconnects that, and then looks at the most intact limb he can see, and then basically takes it out of its housing. Um, and you've got to get the same side as the one I'm missing. Do, do the other one. Oh, point. Can you... <laughs> you goon. Can you please do me a mechanics test? It is too purple. But I will give you a boost die, both because it's reasonably intact, and because Jiren is shouting helpful advice like, no, not the left arm. No, not the leg. No, not the <laughs> leg. Not the other leg. The other leg is also not good. That could have been worse. Oh, great. Two success and one advantage. Okay. What I'd like to do is have successfully removed it. Yep. And also successfully moved, like, both sides. Like, two limbs. Mm. So I can go, I know, we just need spares. That's fine. For your advantage, I do have a suggestion, because I'll let you do that through your successes. So, this medical droid, the right arm is the one with the syringe, kind of the hypodermic dispensers. And it has two chambers in there. One of them, the one that was filled with weapons-grade anaesthetic, is empty, because that's the one that was pumped into Agatha. The other is full, and it's backed up. Essentially, it counts as a stim pack. There's not a lot of there, but there is enough in there to act as a stim pack, should you need it. Lasso? Huh? We've got some spare back to here. Nice. That's basically a do-it-yourself stim pack, isn't it? Pretty much. That is right. Do you want to carry these, or shall I? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll carry, carry it. I arm Jiren. I was waiting for that. Thank you. But I also carry the spare arm clipped onto my um, utility pack. Thank you, he says. He reaches out, and Jiren just very gently puts his hand on your shoulder and closes his eyes. And I'm going to try and heal him. 
but the dark side is strong right now, so nothing happens. It just looks like a very touching moment, but Jiren, when he puts his hand on you, it, he looks pained for the first time since he got up, and then he takes his hand away. I have no idea what you've just tried to do. I sympathetically pat you on the shoulder. It is slightly mechanical, like someone has taught him how to be empathic rather there, than exactly empathic. Yeah. There, there. Right. I've done the best I can do with you, Agatha, I'm afraid. Agatha understands. How many stim packs did you use? Just the one, but I don't know how many you could use without it starting to be a bit ugh. I think the problem with Agatha here is he is physically fit, but a little bit exhausted. Agatha is getting quite tired. It's going to get worse and worse the less oxygen we have. We need to press on. We've got to go find Mr. Flesh and knock him a new one. Agatha likes this idea. Well, you would. He's at the front of the ship. We make our way to the front of the ship. Okay. So, yeah, you gather yourselves and you cross the cargo hold. And as I said, so there are three doors in total in the cargo hold. There is a door to the engine compartment you've been to, yeah, there's the airlock, then there is one that leads further into the ship towards the front, and that is where the um, harvester droid came from. There is also, and I just remind you, clearly a door on the upper level, because that's where the group of animate corpses kind of drop down onto Duran. But that's mm-hmm. that's on the, the upper level, so... That's the other ship that's attached on the No, top. no, no, there's just the top floor. The cargo um, hold is in two levels. There's just a huge hole in the ceiling that's where it's been removed because it's been a while that's just to kind of refresh everyone what the ship looks like so you make your way to the door on your level that leads towards the front of the ship Mm -hmm. that door again kind of grinds open it continues to be very dark down here they are some running lights there are some fluorescent glow tubes still glowing in the ceiling the pillaging the desecration that's been done to the cargo bay where panels have been removed where cabling's been taken out it's a lot less severe on this corridor mostly because for this kind of connecting corridor from the cargo bay to the rest of the ship the the crew compartments the um the cabin the cockpit the head the galley there's not as much useful stuff in the walls it's mm-hmm. just a bit of cabling. And where the lights aren't working here, mostly it appears because they've burned out because they're so old rather than being deliberately removed. Okay. On this corridor, there are two further doors on your left and right-hand side that are open. And you can see from the light that's in them, kind of at the angle that you come in, that the one on the right is bunk rooms of some form. The one on the left appears to be a galley, but I'm assuming that you're not going up to the doors just yet. This is as you kind of open that first set of doors and look down the corridor. Given what's been going on, I'm not preempting anything that you are going to be doing. At the far end of that corridor is another set of doors that leads to the cockpit. Okay, so who's going first? I think it's Oberon. Mm-hmm. And I think he's looking through everything through the targeting scope on his hunting rifle. So he's having a good scan first before we go further. Since Oberon's actually prepped and ready to go, I'm assuming then Agatha's probably going to be next because he's still stupid enough to think he can protect everybody else. But Oberon's actually, you know, mobile without too much groaning. Lass is readying her pistol, but she's mostly standing just in front of Duren to try and make sure that he's defended. Okay. And Oberon, you're going down with your rifle out? Yes. Okay, just checking, because obviously close confines. You head down the corridor. Duren is not facing forwards. We're not moving very quickly. He's looking behind and moving backwards to make sure that we don't get surrounded. Mm -hmm. Because there's still a door we haven't checked. Yep. So draw a bead, scan, head towards the first door. The first door is the one on the right-hand side, and that is bunk rooms. You go in, swing your rifle around and view. The lights in here are not on, but that's because the light switch is off. With it being a bunk room, it's not automatically lit because people might be trying to sleep okay do you flick the light on find the light switch the lights ping on in here there are 10 bunk beds it's possible that that's the entire complement of the crew it's possible that people were sleeping in shifts as would be more usual but there are 10 bunks in here with like the kind of wardrobey cupboard cabinet the ship's cupboards where you store your stuff and at the foot of each bunk is a small chest like a ship's chest for again for for storing people's personal goods in it's not too dissimilar to what you've got on the coal fires mercy in fact it's of a rough age i think so it's a similar kind of design layout just bigger because it's more crew here indicate for everyone else to get into the room once we know it's clear i'll watch the door whilst you check for what we're looking for okay i'll need he pauses and frowns i'll need a hand I'm, i'm serious 
I'm there. I've got a torch on my utility belt and everything, so we can look under things for nooks and crannies. Yep. The lighting in here isn't as terrible as the rest of the ship. Okay. It's a lot more intact. Having a hunt through the cupboards, having a look through the chests, what's mostly in here is very, very old clothing. There's a couple of ancient data slates that have clearly run out of power because you try and press them and nothing happens. There are small bags of very, very, very old coins. Actual, physical, hard metal currency which is something that most of you haven't really encountered. It's archaic. Credit's been the universal system, but, you know, some people clearly thrive on barter and physical currency, and they are stamped in a number of languages with a number of silhouettes. You know, these are from across the galaxy. How much is there? A lot? It's hard to say, because you're used to credits being... I mean, physically, is there a lot of them? Not a massive amount. All kind of bagged up together. Yeah. Probably about four or five kilos. Okay, well, we will take some of them because they may have historic value. It may be the thing we're looking for. Yeah. And we'll also take the data slates. Oh, yes. Yep. There's seven or eight data slates. Yeah. My backpack is relatively empty. Yeah, exactly. From the number of different sizes and styles of clothing, a lot of the clothing kind of just crumbles, mm-hmm. but there are some sentient made fabrics which are a little more resilient. Yeah. You estimate a crew complement of about 25 people, really. I've been going through the numbers, and there's a lot more flesh in this ship that we haven't seen, because it looks like there's 25 at least people living on this ship, or at least was living on this ship. And then we've got the Jedi, and then we've got the... Um, Witch. Witches, that's the ones, yeah. There's a lot of recyclable material if you make your stuff out of bodies. Yeah, it ain't over quite yet. The salvageable sort of clothing, is it of a sort of casual everyday nature or is it something that could we could use to theoretically help patch up a spacesuit? Yeah, no, it's it's cloth. Okay. Yeah. It's cloth and clothing. It, it's not kind of resistant space suit fabric. Because Lass is a bit of a ship's rat, because she used to spend quite a lot of time on various ships, are there any obvious smuggling places or hiding places where people would put things they didn't want people to find? Make me a perception test. It's difficulty two, but because of your background, I'm going to give you two boost die. Okay, so that's two successes overall. Okay, you do find one. Underneath one of the bunks, where one of the air circulation vents is, you kind of see that it's not been put back right. But since none of the other vents have been affected, it's not by whatever's been harvesting the ship, it's been moved and then replaced. Yeah, from what you've seen that Mr. Flesh and its minions are doing, that ain't them. They don't put things back when they've moved them. You unscrew it quickly, you move it to one side with a bit of a scrape, and you find in there another data slate looks a little less archaic than the other ones, and a blaster pistol, a very, very nice, well-made It looks like a dueling pistol. If you can imagine like the old flintlock dueling pistol, it's all sleek lines, swept back handle. It's got the little iron sight at the end for lining it up. It's got a very efficient blaster gas exciter. Yeah, this is hundreds and hundreds of years old, but this is a captain's pistol. This is a general's pistol. This is a noble's pistol. It should not be hidden behind an air grate on a pirate vessel. This is clearly someone's treasured spoil. It's in a holster that, despite being made of real leather, or at least real animal hide, has not rotted away, chased with gold thread, with a mag patch on it so it can just attach to your belt, your harness, your brace, you know, wherever you need that to adhere to, that's where it clips on. Funky. Does it look, just at a glance from someone who, who's a mechanic, does this look like it's been a custom-made job or just a very, very posh catalogue? It's probably a custom order, but it doesn't have a custom grip. It's not made for one person's hand, but it might well be part of a limited run of prestige dueling pistols. Oberon, present for you. Flings in the gun. That's very nice. Can I make a war festival? Yeah. What's my difficulty? It's pretty obscure. I'm going to say... Well, it's difficulty two, but I'm going to throw in two setback die there because it's an obscure custom job. Uh, That's a success. Okay. It's a Stradivarius. You do not know the manufacturer, which means this isn't one of the big churn-em-out regular weapons manufacturers. 
because a lot of them, even though this is so old, are still in existence today. This is either a weapons house that no longer exists, or was a custom job by a bespoke craftsperson. What I can tell you is that it is a superior quality pistol. Check the mechanism to make sure it works. Oh, absolutely it does. Despite all this time, there is still power in there. Not a lot. You reckon that without being able to get it back to the Mercy and re-energising it, you've maybe got three shots in it, but those three shots are going to count. Jiren, would you like this pistol? I can't shoot for any sort of toffee, so uh, I think you should... I'll use it for now. Uh, I clip it to my utility belt, because it clips nicely. And it does. It hangs and then slightly repositions itself to make it easier to draw. Nice. There is clearly some smart tech in the holster. I don't want to rush everybody, but it's getting colder in here. It is. I just need to have a quick look at this data slate. It might have something really important on it. Well, we are looking for something. Is there any power on this slightly less ancient data slate? There is not. However, you did bring a power supply with you, if you remember, that you were originally going to use to power up the airlock. For an engineer of your skill, it's a matter of minutes to reconnect and get enough power going through it to turn it on. Think of it like a mobile phone that's dead. As long as you keep it connected to your power supply, it will work. As soon as you disconnect it, it won't have generated enough of a charge to stay on by itself. But yeah, if you're prepared to spend five minutes or so connecting in and and checking and turning it on and then having a skim through, yeah, you can do that. I'll watch the door. All right, I'm going to do that then, please. Okay. Um, I have an idea. It's going to take you a little bit of time to do this, right? Go and check the galley. It's just across the hall. I will. I sneak out. Okay. Agatha's going with him. Okay. The lights are again off in the galley. They are turn onable. It doesn't look like lighting-wise there's been much pillage from the galley but where the food preparation stuff is you know the heaters the the linked refreshers the microwave the the space oven the space microwave the whole world of tomorrow for food preparation they've all been taken out and you can see in one corner the shells of these items where the useful bits have been removed and then what's left just been scattered in one corner everything's been stripped for parts yep There is still cans of food, but they are so old, even space canning technology is not going to make them still edible. But yeah, there's still a fair amount of decomposed and defunct rations scattered in here. The tables are all on their side, and there is clear signs that there's been a fight in this room as well. Not in the bunk room, but there's been a fight in this room. There is, now that Jiren's previously drawn it to your attention you can see the telltale signs where a lightsaber has been used from the the long blackened scoring on the floor. Lots of blaster impacts and patches of ancient dried blood. So old that it's just discolorations on the tiles and the walls. But yeah, there has been another fight in this room. Oberon, being methodical and careful, he's got his serious face on. I'll make sure that there's no further surprises. Okay. There is not in here. There's been no trap set. You can see the ancient blood trails where the bodies have been dragged out and dragged into well, into the cargo bay, it looks like, originally. Where else is there to go? There is the door at the other end of the corridor that leads into the cockpit. I go back to the bunk room. Yep. The galley is clear. There was a fight. They lost. Right on. Lassa, the data slate is not encrypted and appears to have been being used as a journal by one of the members of the crew. Right. Knowing the pressure of time you're under, I'm going to assume that what you're doing is skimming it. So I'm going to give you the highlights. And then later on, when you have a chance to sit down and read through it in more depth, then we can revisit what its contents are. I imagine that you're not going to sit there and plough through the hundreds of journal entries that are on here. No. Are you checking like the last few days? The last few days to find out what happened to them and this thing we're looking for. I'll just have a look and see if there's any key code words or key words that suggest something important was here. The kind of highlights that you get from this is the captain of the ship was a Kubaz named Gosharan. It details how three or four weeks ago, before the last entry, Gosharan and the crew were hired by a Black Sun factor named Kolos Rek Trinia, whoever they may be, and there's reference that this person lived on Eriadu. That's where they last called to take on the contract and leave. The contract was to travel to a world called Dathomir, which apparently had a coven of force users on it, to infiltrate Dathomir to a specific set of coordinates, retrieve an artifact, something called a holocron, 
and there is a description of the artifact, which is an orb made of some form of glassy material carved with a number of runes and there's a small picture of an artist's rendition of this and they'll know it because even though the orb is made of glass it appears to have green mists swirling within it and the runes when it's exposed to moonlight should glow a vibrant kind of acid green and that's how Gasharan and his crew would know it's the right thing is Lasso telling anybody? I mean, Jaren's still in the room. Are you, are you speaking any of this aloud? Be honest, Lasso can't read without saying things aloud. <laughs> right, jolly good. Jaren being quite the lawist, or in fact quite the man about town picking things up, has he any idea what a holocron is? Make me another law test, please. The difficulty is going to be three purple, I think. It's not completely lost, but he's not that kind of scholar. <laughs> Despite his coat. Yeah, I never considered Duran to be a scholar. He just has been around a lot and picked a load of stuff up. I got no successes, but one advantage. Okay. You don't know what a holocron is. The only reference you can think of is that the Jedi had them. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like it might not have been something these witches used. Holocrons are Jedi technology. That might be why the Jedi was here. Could be. Then they get sent into all sorts of places. They're always sticking their noses in somewhere. Okay, as you come back in the room, we're looking for a... An orb that's got green mist inside it. Okay, that's something to look for. Shiny, yeah. made of glass, got runes on. They glow in moonlight, apparently. That sounds mystic and mysterious. Can we please try and find this thing and kill it? All right, let's move on. But at yeah. least we know what we're looking for now. And she shoves the data pack in her backpack, disconnecting it from the power. Okay, there we are. Are you moving on through the final door that leads into the cockpit? Yes. Okay, the door creaks open once again, Oberon in the lead. Agatha just behind him, then Lassa, then Jaren keeping eyes on the back. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. The cockpit has been gutted, emptied completely. Much as you found in the Star Sprite Oberon, all of the computer technology, the flight gear, the AI data core, all of those bits have been removed from here. There are two immediate things that you will pick up. The first is something that Lassa will pick up, Where is the engines and the power plant that were taken out of the back of the Costa were taken out somewhat hurriedly and crudely? The components from here have been removed with a great deal of care, especially the AI core. There is also a hole, an opening in the floor that exposes a tunnel leading down into the asteroid. Now, it wasn't visible when you were coming up from behind the ship because the ship was flat against the stone of the asteroid. It looks like what little gap might there have originally been between the bottom of the ship and the hole in the asteroid has been patched into a steel tunnel so that there's no loss of air or pressure leading down. This tunnel leads straight down. There is gridding that has been taken from the cargo area along one side of it to allow for example things with claws to climb up and down into the asteroid it is absolutely pitch black down there there is not a single light source that you haven't brought with you shining down into the bowels of the asteroid oh good i can go first agatha does not think that is a good idea can we go back and check the other door yes And interestingly, seeing as the quantity of air that we were working out is based on the size of the ship, we might have more time, because there is a bigger volume of place here, and there's seemingly no break-in. So we may not be running out of air so quickly. Because it's an asteroid as well. Yeah, and seemingly an airtight asteroid. I don't know. I've had a rough day. Let us check the rest of the area, secure everywhere else. I do conveniently have a rope, pointing to the the lumpy bit on his arm. Okay, let's quickly go back and check upstairs, because it might be we don't have to go into the terribly, terribly scary place. But given the day I'm having, we're going in the terribly scary place, but you know, it's fight it. That's all you can do. Bet you a credit we're going to have to go down there. I'm not taking that bet. No, wait a minute. He pulls out one of the old coins. There you go, you can just have it. You know, we could probably just use those at a casino. They accept most things. Yeah, they're probably quite valuable. I have a guy, but now is not the time. We go back into the main area and follow the other part of the the map. Okay, 
you go back into the main area, the other door is on the top level of the cargo thing, and there is presently no way to get up there. Okay. I've got a plan. Well, I could turn the gravity off again, or we can just float up. Yep. That's one option. I have a plan. I do have a grapnel. Yeah. I think both plans is good. And Agatha could always just force leap up. It's within force leap range. You've certainly leapt that distance in the past. Yes. Demonstrably so. Okay. I'm not great at climbing right now. No, see, Oberon, you'd have to pull us up. Turn off the gravity. Hang on. Before you turn off the gravity, let me... I'll find an area via the rappel so it clicks. Mm -hmm. Where are you aiming it to? At an angle, just kind of somewhere into the the ceiling. Yes. Through the... Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to make you roll for it. It's... it's... Duran, if you get on my back and then we turn off the gravity... Okay. Oh, if we turn off the gravity, I can get up there anyway. It's just climbing. That's the problem. I'm thinking more... It's... Okay. It's okay. I've done zero G before. Everyone ready? Yeah. Do I need to roll for this? No, you've got it under control. All right. Three, two, one. Ellie oops then. Okay. The gravity goes off. The one thing I will say is you can't turn the gravity back on from up there. You would need to get back down this terminal unless you find another terminal. But, yeah. Yeah. Gravity turns off. You all suddenly become quite weightless. Push off with my feet and float slowly, not pushing off hard, slowly up. Okay. Can I please have coordination tests from everybody? <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. It's average difficulty, so difficulty two. I'm going to give everybody two boost die, though, because you are expecting it, you know where you're going, and there's a handy rope. They all seem fair useful things for me. So I get no successes, but two advantages. Okay. Do I get a bonus for the rappel? Are you going to let everyone else you climb up your rope first of all? Yes. In which case, you don't need to roll. Actually, Oberon, you can just reel yourself up. Okay. I got four success, but one threat. Okay. And Agatha? I have three success and two threat. Okay. So, I will allow, if people fancy it, Juren to spend his advantage to snag on to you, Oberon, as you zip up, which puts him in a little bit of an awkward position. He's not up there of his own speed, but he does kind of get up there in the end. Okay. The reason my I failed was because of the black dice I have, so I think he possibly was on par for it, but just forgot he only had one arm. Yeah. And therefore bumped against the ceiling rather than... Yeah. Oberon would have been watching. So yeah, you managed to get him up there. As for the threat, I'm pocketing those at the moment. So because he's pocketed them, that just means that we were so stylish as we kind of span in the air, just floated perfectly to where we wanted to be. Yep. But the threat maybe comes from me glaring at you as I do it. <laughs> Stop showing off. So, up here on this floor, it's the top half of the cargo containment area. This section is where the smaller bits of cargo would ordinarily be stored. Up here, because most of the ceiling panels are intact, there's a bit more light on the situation. You can see the lift that kind of goes between the two floors. It's out of power, but that's in the corner. There is the opening in the ceiling from where the Pathfinder ship has connected on. And there is another set of doors that leads to the medical bay, as it were. And as you get on this floor, as you uh, kind of gather Jiren, look around, see what's going on, I'm spending the threat as those medical doors grind open again. There is movement in the darkness beyond, and that's where we're ending the episode. This episode's patron is Theo Fatel. Thank you very much for backing the show, Theo. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I know that you're a Facebook follower rather than a Twitter follower, so we've not interacted with you as much as we have with some of our other backers. But thank you very, very much for backing the show. Hopefully we'll change that and start giving you some mither on Facebook as well. Thank you very much for your support. We really, really appreciate it. And we hope that you're enjoying where this horrible series of events is taking our crew. Right, there we are. Until next time, I've been your host. This has been Force Majeure, and we shall see you next time. Force Majeure is played using the Star Wars Force and Destiny game system by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Our intro music for this season is Unholy Night by Kevin MacLeod, and our outro music remains Suburban Outlaw by Forget the Whale, both used with gratitude under the Creative Commons license. 
If you like the show and want to interact with us, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, all of which are at Force Majeure Pod, though Twitter is probably where you're going to find us more regularly. If you enjoy what we do and want to support the show, there's three ways you can do that. The first is via our Patreon at patreon.com slash Force Majeure Pod. The second is by buying us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash Force Majeure Pod. And the third way is by rating and reviewing us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, anywhere where you can find us. We really like reviews. It tells us that we're telling the stories that you want to hear and helps other people find us. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time.